this is a mood we're going for today. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm doing a sit down talking thing. I have not talked to the camera in a long time. And it definitely feels weird, so excuse my awkwardness. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do not a revamp or like, I don't know. I, would, I want to get back to vlogging. I enjoy vlogging. In fact, since my last vlog, I think I think my last vlog was my 30th birthday. And then before that was like when I like, I don't know, my last race, maybe even then. But it was more about like track. <laughs> But I never stopped taking video that whole time. In fact, I have like so much video from the past what, two and a half, three years at this point that I just have not used for anything. Like I've sat down, some of them I even edited together and I just never got to posting it. And I don't know, I just get into these ruts where I'll take a bunch of video, have this idea of what it'll look like in my mind. And like, I'll almost even create it all in my mind already. And then, you know, you get the idea of like, or I know I, de I definitely feel this. And maybe it's my neurodivergency, but it's like, sometimes I like think something so hard or I envision it so well that I get that feeling of completeness and like feeling of accomplishment. Even if it's not like the exact same thing, you sort of get that feeling and then it never gets done because it feels like I've already done it. Um, maybe that's relatable, maybe it's not, but definitely for me that happens a lot so I feel like for me a lot of it is I'll get all this film and I won't really get to editing it or like I'll get stuck in the editing phase and I think when I think back to when I was like making them more often and getting them out more often you really have to get into this groove of editing and this groove of like getting things done um and the hardest ones are often those first few ones like Especially when you haven't, you're resting, you haven't done it in a while. So like really getting back into like, okay, putting the video in, editing it down, et cetera, et cetera. And then like, as you do it more often, it gets quicker and quicker. So it doesn't feel like such a big like slog. But yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm trying to push through like, you know, I, like in the past I've always said like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then eventually it becomes like eight months later. And I have footage from eight months ago and I'm like, well, now it's eight months later. So... I just have to start all over again. So I'm not doing that this time. Like no matter what, I'm too, I'm already too much of the process. So I'm trying to like stop that. So to, to stop that cycle, I'm just gonna say like, whatever I'm producing right now, I'm producing and I'm just gonna put it out to the world and we'll go from there. So I took notes, um, cause I don't want to, like I've already rambled. Like I've been filming for six minutes and it's all been rambling, so. I'm going to take a moment to pause and reflect on my notes and get back. Okay. Hello. Welcome. I'm Gemma, a retired Olympian, 30-something-year-old at this point. Feels crazy to say, but I'm 30-something now. And, uh, yeah, I don't know where to go from there. And I think that's, I guess, yeah, I think... That's where I'm at with my life right now. I'm struggling, like, and I think I've been going through this since I've retired from track and stuff. My thing dying? Wow, already it's almost dying. Um, yeah, I've been going through this since I retired from track where I've been like, um, who am I? Who was I before and who am I now? Um, you know, for a long period of my life, and I think a lot of, at least athletes in general, you don't have to be an Olympian or a Paralympian or anything like, or even not even an athlete, but like when you've done something for so long and you've been pretty good at it, or even if it's not been pretty good, but people know you as like that person that does that thing and you know yourself as that person that does that thing. I think when you don't have that thing anymore, you really have to figure out who you are without it. I think I'm still in that phase of figuring it out. And I think for... The past few years or whatever like I've been trying to figure out like you know a lot of people will co like consider themselves as a lot of Americans actually uh, will consider themselves like uh, their thing is their career like I am a writer I am a marketer I am whatever thing in life 
consultant, whatever. Um, but that's like your job. And I don't think I resonate with jobs enough to choose that as my thing. Um, I do want to do a job that I enjoy and can make money off of and can live comfortably. But yeah, I don't think I want it to make me my whole life. Um, though I, I currently I'm an athlete fellow at LA 28. Um, but I'll get to that in a bit, but, and I like that job and I think it would probably end up one of those shops where I'm like, Oh, I'm so into this. Um, but you know, I have to try and break the cycle at some point and find other things. So like things I'm working on now, getting back into reading. I'm super trying to get back into that hobby. Uh, I used to be an avid reader as a kid. College destroyed that for me. Like I was already reading so much in college. I was not reading any extra books and I'm trying to get back into that. Um, and it's going pretty okay. Like I did really well last year. I got a Kindle and that really like that and commuting boosted my ga reading game so much. And now I'm kind of like new year trying to re get back into that. I'm not, I don't have a commute anymore. I walk to work and it's like a five minute walk. Um, so now I'm try trying to figure out like, okay, just reading your free time. Um, don't turn on the TV. That's not happening as much, but I have taken some weekends where I'm, you know, reading in a cafe and like feeling cool. <laughs> I was in Boston for the past two and a half -ish years, working at one of those universities that was in Boston and doing a job that was fine. Um, great benefits, of course, because it's a university, but the job was fine. I was finding myself pretty neutral. I mean, I think I excelled at the job personally. I believe that and people told me that was also true. So I just accepted that. <laughs> but that became kind of boring. And then I was excelling so hard that I started to feel burnt out. Um, and then by the end of it, I really was just like, I am burnt out. But I've, we, like my partner and I have always planned to move to LA in 2024, which is now. So I gave my notice in September, 2023. I gave like three months notice just cause, uh, I was in no rush. I had no job lined up. Um, and I was kind of wary about the uh, the financial situation happening around in the world right now. So I gave three months notice, you know, to at least get me through the end of the year. And I felt like as each month went on, I was like, this is great. Like, I'm getting, like, I could feel the burden lifting <laughs> with each month passing by. And in that interim time, I also applied for a fellowship at the LA Olympics. And I think before this, I had like more of a generic idea of like what this was. Um, but so I, I work for LA 28 as an athlete fellow. The athlete fellowship is a program that brings in retired Olympians and Paralympians um, to kind of get a kickstart and or pivot to their careers basically. So. If you're recently retired, as some or all or most may know, it can be a struggle to get a job. Like even my last job at the university that I was at was very hard for me to get. Like I applied for jobs after retirement. Pr pretty much as soon as I retired, I started applying for a regular, regular job. And it took me six months to get the job that I wanted. Many interviews, but none went to the next stage. And, you know, I was all excited that, oh, you don't have enough experience you don't have whatever and I always took it as a slight because 
even though I had spent the past six to seven years competing and training, I also was weary of this exact moment of when I would retire. And so I had freelance that whole time in the fields that I was applying for. So to me, I was like, okay, I'm seeing that I have these soft skills from being an athlete. I have the hard skills on paper from freelancing so I could do the job. But people are so, so stuck on the running and the track stuff and the Olympian stuff that they just won't give you a chance. And so a program like this where a retired athlete can come in, you we work in two different um, departments for, so we do six month rotations. So this first six months you're in one department, the next six months you're in another department and you're gaining those skills that you can put on your resume. Like, you know, aside from the soft skills, you're gaining those hard skills. You're gaining that basically career year that can help give you a boost. And the whole time you're networking the whole time, like you're meeting people in your department, you're meeting people at the company, you're meeting people outside the company, you're meeting people connected to the company and kind of the hopes to like give you that leg up that everyone else has had, um, you know, their whole time. And like you, I end up getting with this program and hopefully I personally want to try and keep finding ways to work with LA 28 after this, but that's not set in stone. I just have to like, you know, keep trying and working for it. I really appreciate like whether I get a full-time job or not, I'm really hoping that I can make the most of the experience, um, learn as much as I can. I mean, it's, it's already interesting enough being on the other side of how an Olympics happens and learning how it all comes together. But it also like feels reassuring to like see like other retired Olympians in the workforce and like kicking ass and kicking butt and being awesome. And then I feel like this, it's a year. So like I'm only two months in, but it feels like this will be a good year for me to really like ground myself and figure out where I want to go from here. Um, yeah, I just want to figure that out from here. Like I don't know what's happening over there, but yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. Anyway, I live in LA now. Um, I was already planning to move here in June. And because I got the fellowship, I moved early. So I moved in January and I'm here. I like it. Um, traveling was tricky. Um, And yeah, the past two months, I've basically been trying to settle in and find some routine and enjoy the things around.
but it has really been nice to live close to work. I did that on purpose and walk to work, which sounds crazy to some of these LA people, but I like walking. Um, and I like that I'm so close, so I don't feel kind of the stress I did when I was in Boston. In Boston, my commute was an hour and a half total. I would drive 15 minutes to the train station, take the train for like an hour, an hour 15, depending. And then I get to work. And I would leave early because I didn't want to, like, the later you left, it kind of, like, made the time move exponentially. So if I left, like, 15 minutes later, suddenly it's an hour 45 minutes or hour, two hours or something. Like, And it's mainly that driving part, I think, that kind of, like, pushes it. And then the later you go, like, when you're going at peak time, the trains are packed, and I hated that. So I would wake up at 5.30. I would leave the house by 6.15, and I'd get to the office by 8.30. Yeah, an hour-ish, 15-ish. Is that right? No, that doesn't make any sense. That's like two hours. I'd leave my house at 7.15, and I'd get to the office at 8.30. That's exactly it. Yeah. I think that's about it. Hopefully, interspersing these clips, I've put in, like, me doing my routine and me at a cafe having fun and being like, ooh, look at me. Or me with my cat. Her name's Yara. She was adopted. And at this point, I've had her a little over a full year and it feels awesome. Um, but yeah, welcome to my channel and look out for more. I'm at 19%, so I have time. Is there anything else? Anything else I want to say? I think that's it thanks for watching and look out for more i'm going to japan in a couple of weeks and i would really like to push myself to put out a lot of vlogs about japan like my original goal was to do daily so i don't think that's gonna happen i, I am immediately think i'm going to fail that immediately but it would be nice to get like every two or three days or something in and just really try and document my time there. I mean, I'll film the whole time. Whether I like edit it there or not is up to me, I guess, at the time. But, but yeah, look out for that. I think that'll be fun. I think I've like moved out of frame like too much, but yeah, that's the end. Thanks.